Today, we will discuss the Evil of the Daleks' extensive model shots, original location footage from the Abominable Snowmen, and why Germany hates the Ice Warriors. Our 19th missing serial is the evil of the Daleks. The Daleks have a scheme that will ensure the continuous supremacy over the universe. Yet, they need the Doctor's help to do it. Jamie also begins to lose faith in the Doctor. Sadly, only episode 2 exists in the BBC archive. So, what does exist? Graham Strong's audio recordings are considered the best, and Holman and Landon also have recordings. Episode 2 exists in its entirety thanks to Gordon Hendry's 16mm film print. A part of Episode 7's model sequences exist, but are believed to contain footage that wasn't used in the final edit. All seven episodes' telesnaps exist, and 26 additional off-screen photographs by Chris Thompson, who was the production designer of Evil the Daleks, also exist, many of which are almost identical to John Cura's telesnaps. Two photos from episode 6 were taken by Gordon Langdon, and three were taken by fan Terry Reason. Three prints of the Evil of the Daleks were made. Australia returned their copy to BBC London. Episode 2 from the archive is more likely this version. Singapore's copy is unknown, and New Zealand junk theirs. Terry Nation, meanwhile, had other plans for the Daleks. At this time, Terry Nation pitched his Dalek spin-off to the BBC, which denied his proposal and decided to push for American backing. For him to do that, the BBC decided to move the Daleks out of the program and give them their final ends. Sidney Newman suggested that they don't completely destroy all the Daleks and leave a hint that maybe one survives, just in case they wish to bring them back to the series in the future. How can you view this serial today? The Evil of the Daleks, as of this video, has not been animated. Episode 2 can be seen in the Lost in Time box set. Loose Cannon's Evil of the Daleks was released as LC31. An audio version was released in 1992, narrated by Tom Baker, with the music by the Beatles being edited out due to copyright fees. In 2003, Fraser Hines recorded new narration and the song Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen was cleared for use. It was re-released in 2004 and 2012. The Evil of the Daleks was novelised in 1993. Let's talk Loose Cannon Reconstructions. In the last episode, we discussed reconstructions in their infancy. Let's discuss the making of one of the most ambitious reconstructions by the Loose Cannon team, The Evil of the Daleks. Due to the high amount of action in this serial, there were many scenes where a telesnap just couldn't explain what was going on. Some scenes missed telesnaps altogether, so it was up to the Loose Cannon team to approach reconstructing the serial in a new way. Dean Rose, a member of Loose Cannon, went along to Grimm's Dyke, which is a house in Harrow where the original episode was filmed to take some reference shots with permission from the owners. The owners had an interest in film and television history, and when Dean asked if they could bring a Dalek along to film some shots, they happily agreed. Russport's wife, Julie, played the part of Victoria, donning a wig. Wig, did you just say wig? Yes. Found last minute at a general shop, and a borrowed outfit with sofa trim to make it fit. The scene was matched with the original telesnap that exists. The wallpaper from the telesnap had been removed over time and was edited back in with Adobe After Effects. This type of dedication to reconstructing is why many view Loose Cannon as the best way to view missing Doctor Who episodes. Our 20th missing serial is the Abominable Snowman. High up in the Himalayas, a man is killed by an impossible creature, which starts off a chain of events that will begin a lifelong feud for the Doctor and the Great Intelligence. Sadly, only episode 2 exists in the archive. So, what still exists? Graham Strong's audio recordings are considered the highest quality. David Holman and Richard Landon also have recordings. Episode 2 exists from a 16mm film print borrowed by Ian Levine, which was found by Roger Stevens in 1982. Ian Levine brought this episode along with Moonbase 4, Invasion of the Dinosaurs 1 and Space Museum 1, and other non-Doctor Who prints for £25. The location filming 16mm film also exists, which is a much higher quality than the original print. It also contains a bit of material that wasn't included in the final edit, such as a shot of Deborah Watling falling over. 
Late Night Lineup, a BBC program, contained two shots from this story also. Gerard Blake, the director of The Abominable Snowman, recorded some 8mm colour footage of behind the scenes on location. Thankfully, all telly stamps exist for the serial. Four prints of The Abominable Snowman were made. Australia returned theirs, Nigeria's fate is unknown, New Zealand junked theirs in 74, and Zambia doesn't have any BBC material. Behind the scenes, the crew were changing again. Peter Bryant took over as script editor in Tomb of the Cybermen, eventually to take role of producer from the Web of Fear to the Space Pirates. Due to the fact that season 4 was recorded a week before transmission, they decided to record episodes 1 and 2 of the serial two days in a row. Now there would be a three week gap between production and transmission. The Yeti developed by writers Mervyn Hazeman and Henry Lincoln were an instant success and its sequel The Web of Fear was put into pre-production during the production of episode 4 of The Abominable Snowman. How can you view The Abominable Snowman today? As of this video, this episode is not being officially animated by the BBC. The surviving episode 2 is released on the Lost in Time DVD box set alongside the remaining footage. Luis Cannon reconstructed this episode in 2006 under LC25. The soundtrack by Fraser Hines was released in 2001 and has been re-released in 2003 and 2012. The story was novelised in 1974. Our 21st missing serial is the Ice Warriors. The TARDIS arrives during an ice age on planet Earth. Buried within the ice stands an imposing figure made of armor never seen before. Yet the creature within isn't as dormant as it may seem. Sadly, episodes two and three are missing from the archive. So, what does exist? Graham Strong's recordings are considered the highest quality. Lennon and Holman also recorded these episodes. Episodes 1, 4, 5 and 6 exist in the archives since 1988. Thankfully, all telly snaps exist. Five prints of the Ice Warriors were made, and we have a new player in the mix, Germany. But don't get too excited, it was an audition print to see if Germany liked Doctor Who. Turns out they didn't, and they rejected the series. The print's fate is unknown though. Australia returned their copy, Singapore's fate is unknown, New Zealand's copy was either returned or junked, and Zambia hasn't got any BBC material. The Ice Warriors originally looked quite different. Trying to emulate the success of the Daleks and the Cybermen, a new recurring villain was brainstormed. Originally, the Ice Warriors were to be cybernetic Vikings, but the costume designer envisioned them as reptilian. The director agreed with this idea. So, how can you watch the Ice Warriors today? The Ice Warriors was animated and released on DVD in 2013. The animation was completed by Curios Entertainment. An official cut down hybrid reconstruction of episodes 2 and 3 were made by Ralph Montague for the original VHS release and is available on the DVD release also. The story was reconstructed by Loose Cannon in 2004 under LC21. In 2005, a soundtrack was narrated by Fraser Hines and re released in 2012. The story was novelised in 1976. So, which one of these serials would you like to see return to the archive most? Join us next week when we discuss the Web of Fear's sole missing episode, or is it missing? Inspect sneaky seaweed in Fury from the Deep and visit the Wheel in Space. Follow me on Twitter or subscribe to my channel for more Doctor Who content. Hi. So, this episode ran a bit shorter than usual, so I decided to add the full video that Peter Purvis sent me in response to this video series. Hello Josh, Peter Purvis here. Um, I just wanted to say how much I'm enjoying your breakdown of uh, the background to some of the missing episodes, particularly Galaxy 4. And just something I can add to your perception of what it was. Yeah, I was pretty cheesed off when I got the scripts for that, but the reason was that I joined the show only four weeks before, five weeks before, and it hadn't filtered down to the writer, William Ems, that the part was no longer going to be played by Jacqueline Hill, but it was going to be played by me. So I was pretty choked with what I got, but the, the reason for it was, was perfectly legitimate. I felt uh, quite sorry for the writer, actually, but I gave him a bad time at the time because I didn't know the background to why he hadn't been told. He didn't know that the cast was changing. And of course, the story was already in the schedule, so we had to do it, and he had to readapt his script, taking Jacqueline Hill's lines and give them to poor old Stephen. Nice talking to you.